Supersizers 44-year-old mum Janet and her 21-year-old daughter Tara will be entering the feeding clinic. Go for cake. For five days, they'll swap diets with two polar opposites in a last-ditch attempt to prove they can survive on far less food. Some of the foods we like are jelly sweets. I like cherry bakewells, crisps, biscuits, Chinese. Chinese. I love Chinese so much. Toffee, chocolate, <laughs> fudge, ice cream. Cakes. You like cakes. We have cake Wednesdays. Sometimes, though, Wednesday can't wait, so we go down Monday instead. <laughs> The girls live in Southampton with Tara's sisters. Tara and Janet are inseparable. We're not like mother and daughter, are no, we? No, definitely not. We're more, We're more like, like mates. Best friends, yeah. yeah. We encourage each other to eat too much, really. We're just both as bad as each other, aren't we? Yeah. Filling up on food has become a dangerously unhealthy obsession. You have a dread of being hungry, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I just hate the feeling of being hungry. Yeah. Even if I'm really, really full, I find it really hard not to eat more. Just fed up with it. I just don't need to be this fat. It's ridiculous. And who better to help them than Dr Christian Jessen? Hi, Janet. I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. Tara? Hello. you guys take your dressing gowns off? Stick them on the back of the chair for me. 44-year-old Janet and 21-year-old Tara have been through a detailed medical to clarify their health issues before starting the swap. You are £375. Janet tips the scales at a massive 26 stone 11. That's an incredible 15 stone overweight. £417. And Tara weighs in at a mammoth 29 stone 11. That's a terrifying 17 and a half stone overweight. Their combined weights are almost half a tonne. In fact, it gets worse. Janet, your BMI is 56, mm -hmm. and your BMI is 60. What does that mean? That means you're at significant risk of developing serious health problems like circulatory disease, heart attack, stroke, diabetes. And I know, actually, tick one box already, because you've got diabetes, haven't you? Yeah. You need to wake up yeah. because this diabetes at this rate is going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And it may very well be a rather unpleasant, protracted mm -hmm. death with a lot of disability. Yeah. Yeah, including blindness. I don't want to die young. I want to be able to see my kids grow up. I don't want to miss out on the rest of my life. I do worry about their health because it scares me like my mum's obviously the only parent I've got now, and I don't want to lose my mum as well. Your eating habits have come from somewhere, presumably from your mum, as you've always lived with her, but where have yours come from? I think sometimes I've influenced my mum more than she's actually influenced me. You think? I'm the bad influence, actually. Since I've really, really gained weight rapidly, it's always been me that's been the devil on the shoulder. <laughs> I hate my weight. I think I just want to be, like... I know it's cliché, but, like, normal. I just want to be normal go out shopping with my friends, cos I just don't do that. What's up? Tell me. What's up, you? Hmm? I don't know why I do it to myself. That is what you're here to find out. Cos there will be a reason. Why is this week going to work? If we don't lose it now, then... Yeah. We'll be dead. Basically. Don't worry, ladies. It's time to bring in the light cavalry. Hi, John. Hi. I'm Christian. Nice to meet you, Keith. Nice to meet you. We've brought together two similar super skinnies whose minuscule diets will teach the supersizers they can survive on far less, whilst their gargantuan portions will encourage the super skinnies to eat more. £129. Meet Keith Lineage, 33, 6 foot 1 and a measly 9 stone 3. That's one and a half stone underweight. And his diet swap partner, 37 year old Joanne Evans. £89. She's a minuscule 6 stone 5 and also one and a half stone underweight. <laughs> Joanne is a very busy single mum of seven. Keith is a workaholic divorcee who sees his daughter every weekend. Sometimes I don't get a lot of time in the day to eat because I am so busy. To allocate time purely just for food? No. When they do actually eat, they're not exactly adventurous. My diet seems to be the same. It's quite easy. Ham sandwich takes two minutes to make. Get home from work, don a kebab or a bit of fast food takeaway. I generally stick to the same sort of food. 
tomato sandwiches for lunch and I do eat cream crackers. It's fair to say they've lost their love for food, but both have totally fallen for its replacements. Every day, decaffeinated tea. I drink about 12 cups on average a day and I thoroughly enjoy all of them. I think you probably describe me as a caffeine addict, actually. If I'm hungry, I'll have a coffee or I'll have an end drink. So then the hunger does sort of, um, you know, go away. John, do you want to start and just tell me a little bit about your weight history and, and how you've got this way? I guess mine's due to my marriage breakdown about seven years ago. Um, become a single mum to seven children overnight and basically put all my, my thoughts into them and less onto myself. And Keith, with you, it's a kind of similar story, isn't it? Um, had a breakup in a relationship, baby daughter, and I kept to work, 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 just block my mind out of emotions going from my head. I do it work all the time. Do you enjoy food? No. No, <laughs> good answer, right? Straight away. No, not at all. Not Nothing. really, no. What about you, Keith? I do enjoy food. It's having the time to prepare food, cook food, and enjoy food. But if you're worried about your health because of your weight, food needs to become a priority. Our super sizes and super skinny's weights are worlds apart. But their lives are about to come crashing together. Wow. Incredible. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's going to be gonna a really be tough. tough week. <laughs> really tough. Really tough. <laughs> All your bones are sticking out. Words can't describe. I felt like a sparrow. These four dysfunctional dieters are about to be faced with their entire weekly food intake. Joanne, this tube here is going to be yours. This is yours. So we're going to start at the top of the day with breakfast. Here we go. Yeah, that's not a good start, is it? So surely by this stage, then, lunchtime, we are hungry. <laughs> right. Keith, is that a lunch? The answer is no, if you need a clue. No. And Joe, what is that? You've had no breakfast, seven kids to clean up after, and you think a tomato is going to sustain you and allow you to do that. Does this surprise you? Is this what you're expecting from my super skinnies? No, not as bad as one tomato, but I do expect it to be healthy. Right, let's have a look at more lunches. At least we've got a sandwich there, Keith. That's a kind of normally lunch thing. It's not a handful of crisps. Dinner time. What, what is that? It's a doner kebab. Oh, look, there's another one. Another doner kebab. Hooray! Right. Should we have a look at the sort of snacks you get through? That is it for food for you guys, really and truly it. And I have to say, Joe, you win the prize for smallest amount of food in a food tube ever. You don't seem... Surprised, shocked, ashamed, anything by this. What are your thoughts? It is really little. What do you tend to drink? Lots of coffee and, oh, and caffeine drinks. And with you, madam, you drink loads and loads of tea, and yet it's decaf tea, isn't it? So you get nothing that gives you a boost, gives you a lift. What do you think your calorie count is, roughly, daily? I ain't got a clue. It's about 1,300 calories a day. In fact, Keith's only eating the amount recommended for a two- to three-year-old boy. With you, I don't really know what to say, because your calorie count is astounding. It's 950 calories a day. This means Joanne's calorie intake is less than the doctors recommend for a one-year-old. To maintain a healthy weight, Jo should be eating 2,000 calories a day and Keith, 2,500. Ladies, it's your turn now. Tara, this is going to be your tube. Janet, this is your tube. Here we go. First breakfast, coming in now. So that looks like some sort of takeaway breakfasty thing. Well, you buy it, you don't really yeah. sit at home. Why not? Eat on the go. OK, lots and lots of sewers. OK, let's have a look at lunches. That looks like a big naan bread. More sandwiches, more bread. Chicken nuggets? Yep. Yeah, more chips, bit of chocolate. I mean, your food says to me, convenience. Yeah. Yes. Quick, grab it, yeah. I want it now, is that right? All right, so, here we go, dinners. Samosas, yeah, OK, big old noodly prawns, the works. Indian takeaway, chicken tikka, is it? And remember, with takeaway food, you have no control over what's in it at all, do you? The fat content, the salt content, the sugar content, you know nothing about it. Same sort of thing again. Fish and chips, some pizza there. Let's get your snacks in. 
Ice buns, sweets, crisps, chocolate. What do you guys think? I'm speechless. It's just so much. It's time for change for you girls. Big time. On some days, Tara and Janet combined are eating 14,000 calories. Enough for a staggering seven people. So, guys, we have got to the end of the food tunes, which means that now the diet swap has officially started. Just so you're absolutely clear, Keith, you are swapping with Tara and Joe with Janet. The diet swap officially starts now. Coming up, the Double Trouble diet swap kicks off with an encouraging start. This is nice, by the way. It is nice. <laughs> Will you please shut up? <laughs> this week, we've got four residents in the feeding clinic. There's mother and daughter Janet and Tara, and to help this supersized pair shift the weight, we've created a super skinny alliance of Joanne and Keith, who weigh almost four times less. It's dinner time, and the supersizers are preparing to dish up a Wells family favourite. Joe and Keith's supper tonight is a cholesterol cram Chinese takeaway, including chow mein, vegetable curry, chicken curry, chicken balls, rice and chips. Joe's even got dessert, strawberries, meringue and ice cream. <laughs> but for Janet and Tara, it's a mug of coffee and a cup of tea with a couple of crackers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's really big. Do you always eat something that large? Most of the time. Yeah. OK. I'm quite worried, cos I, I never have coffee. I don't like coffee. Oh, I've got to drink tea. Enjoy. The first food face-off begins. Does it taste nice? Yes. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. <laughs> you look like you're enjoying it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it is. not on this occasion. But this is nice, by the way. It is nice. <laughs> Will you please shut up? <laughs> just, just, just pull it, you know, it's nice. Very much appreciated. I've had enough now, but thank you. Any room for pudding? Oh, I'll try the pudding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Minutes later, both super skinnies are well and truly beaten. That's it. It's me done. Thank you. Me done too, I'm afraid. At the moment, I'm actually feeling fine on the coffee, but ask me in about ten seconds <laughs> and um, <laughs> I might not be so sure. <laughs> oh, my God, my meal tonight was just huge. There was so much of it. It was unbelievable, unreal. What do you think? There was too much on the plate. There was too much. It was overflowing. We tried. And failed. It's day two in the feeding clinic, and our double diet swappers, Joe and Keith and Tara and Janet, are speculating about today's menu. I'm really not looking forward to breakfast, are you? I'm not looking forward to drinking and more you're sweet tea. Get tea won't you? I think this morning we're going to get a big plate of breakfast. Not sure what, but I think it'll be cooked and hot. In fact, it's a hot takeaway breakfast with an egg muffin and hash browns for Joanne and pancakes and hash browns for Keith. Yeah. While it's two mugs of tea for Janet, coffee and energy drinks for Tara. Bon appétit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you worry that if you eat food, you'll put too much weight on? No, I'm hoping to put on a bit of weight. I'm hoping yeah. to get some curves and some boobs and hips. <laughs> and, do you know what I mean? It'd be good. It's all if you eat like we have, and you'll put on <laughs> some this cute. week. <laughs> Joanne and Keith's regular diet contains vast quantities of caffeine. Caffeine is an appetite suppressant when drunk in large quantities. It's thought the safe amount of caffeine is 400 milligrams a day. That's about five instant coffees or seven cups of tea. Keith is drinking double that. No surprise then, he has a caffeine addiction. This can lead to anxiety, irritability and loss of appetite. The new caffeine-free Keith now has a gap to fill. I didn't think I'd be this hungry this soon. Right, finished. I'm really <laughs> impressed that you managed to eat all that, actually. Well, one breakfast gone. Would you like some of really mine? Cool. No, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks for the same. 
Don't think I've ever had a liquid breakfast. <laughs> Nor have I. No, not out of choice no, anyway. No. I feel fine actually. I don't. I don't actually feel hungry. It's just I feel very, um, very alert. <laughs> I feel quite sick now. Quite, I've got like a greasy, horrible feel. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I feel perfectly fine. Oh, I honestly, I, feel, I can't wait. <laughs> what time is dinner? Well, before lunch and dinner, there's a case of eight cakes for Keith and a vanilla slice for Joe. Where do I put it all? I don't know. You eat that, I eat this. We'll do it together. You'll get there. I know. Joe eats all her vanilla slice, and amazingly, throughout the day, Keith polishes off all eight cakes. With Keith's appetite already returning, and Tara seemingly coping with her hunger issues, Dr Christian encourages them both to join forces and look to their pasts to try and find the emotional reasons for their current eating problems. OK, well, there, first year senior, I had no issues with food at all. Um, I was perfectly happy there, so no problems. The next one I was here, that was Katie, OK? Yeah. Um, obviously happy then, obviously. That was yeah. your fiancé? Yeah, yeah, that was my fiancé. Just after a year this picture was taken, OK, is when I don't see hit. So you didn't really know what was... I didn't know what was happening. I panicked so much. I was rushing about. I think that you look thin here, but I think you look a lot thinner now. Once the separation took place, that was from my lowest moment, you know? Yeah. And that is when it really hit home. It's like, my God, you lost the most precious two girls in your life, and, um, and that is when... That's the last, that's the last part. But you haven't lost her, though, have you? Well, I've got my daughter. Yeah. With Keith coming to terms with where his problems lie, Tara looks back to her childhood for some answers. This sounds really stupid, but I can't remember ever being really, really happy. And obviously, when I was younger, my mum's husband died, so I sort of stepped in as sort of the second mother figure. I tried to stay emotionally strong for my mum. Mm -hmm because I didn't want things to get to sort of stress her. So rather than tell my mum things that would worry me, I would always bottle everything up. Did you then see food as a comfort or...? I don't actually think it was sort of like a comfort thing. I was allowed to eat the wrong foods, you know. There was never any strict guidelines like, you must eat this, you mustn't eat that. Do you think becoming responsible at a very young age actually contributes to your weight issues? Yeah, maybe it did. Tara begins to realise it's time to put herself first. It's been really, really useful. I've learnt a lot. <laughs> I think I need to make things better for myself. If I don't do it now, then I'll miss out on more of my life. And I've already missed out on 21 years already, so... Weeks ago, three women with different eating disorders, Mina, Emma and Erin, embarked on an eight-week course in order to help them tackle their own issues with food. Today, dietitian Ursula Philpott has invited the women to join her for breakfast, where they'll face a vast array of choices. A hotel buffet can present a huge challenge for somebody with an eating disorder. Both the choice and the amount of food are overwhelming. They will feel mixed up between being tempted by certain foods but feel frightened that they're being asked to move outside their usual pattern of eating, their rituals and their set food prescription. At the beginning of the series, Mina confessed she usually sticks to porridge, then binges and purges on sugary treats several times throughout the day. So talk me through what you're thinking. Well, my first thought is <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> not having pastry. Uh, that just wouldn't happen. I do have a bit of a problem with sugar, I suppose. Sugary things are what I binge on, and so perhaps I have an association with sugar and binging. By encouraging Mina to limit the amount of sugar she has as part of a balanced diet, Ursula aims to help her slowly gain control over her desire to binge and purge. I'm not suggesting you have a very sugary diet because that can trigger binges. So I think probably what you might want to think about is maybe not for breakfast, but at some point trying something with a bit more sugar in and seeing how you feel about that. For now, Mina chooses something containing natural sugars, a banana and some wheat biscuits. 
Breakfast is the time of day which Emma, who suffers from anorexia, finds hardest. I find it very scary thought of if somebody wants me to sit down and eat what somebody would regard as a standard normal-sized breakfast or lunch. Four weeks ago, Emma revealed she normally sticks to black coffee first thing. Just to go with the coffee in the morning isn't adequate. You know, breakfast is about break fast, to break the fast overnight, and a coffee will not break the fast because it's just water, really, especially if it's, if it's got no milk in it. Emma's anorexia leads her to starve herself all day, then suffer uncontrollable urges to binge on fruit at night. I would probably have easily four pears, a couple of plums, two apples. I've gone through the stage of taping the fridge, shutting the door into the kitchen and barricading that to stop me from getting to it, emptying the fridge and putting it all out in the garage, but nothing seems to work. Because of eating during the night, then I find I don't have the appetite for breakfast in the morning. Today, Ursula's challenge is to get Emma to eat anything. In order to break the cycle of starvation, she punishes her body with each day. It's sometimes difficult to go from nothing, say, to have a whole bowl of cereal or nothing to two slices of toast. Having avoided breakfast for years, Emma chooses a small bowl of fruit salad. A lot of ways I just kind of want to mm -hmm. just keep it on, lots and lots. But then I'm also worried that I might kind of eat it and then be upset with myself. Try and start with a smaller portion, even if that's a really small portion, and then build it up and get more comfortable with it as you go along. When the group first met, Erin admitted her desire to binge on sweet foods and then purge usually begins after breakfast. A real binge for me would be literally like... I would feel like a shark on a feeding frenzy, just eating mindlessly. Deciding to avoid the sweet pastries, Erin attempts a cooked breakfast. What do you think of that as a portion? I think I'd probably still get hungry. Uh-huh. Um, but maybe if I put something else with it that wasn't fried, it would make yeah. me feel a little bit better. better. Yeah, I think that's probably a good option. What about something like a slice of toast or half a slice of toast? I'd throw it up. You'd, throw it, you'd be sick? Yeah. OK. What, do you, what are you thinking? Fruit or I'm something? I'm thinking some fruit because I never mm. bother. Some grapes, I think. Yeah. Just because I know I like them and they're small mm. and manageable. OK. After the challenge of choosing a breakfast, the group face an even bigger hurdle, eating it. And for Emma, having a bowl of fruit salad this morning marks a major breakthrough. So, guys, I was just going to ask you, obviously, having all the food out on the buffet like that can be difficult for people, and also because you've not prepared it yourselves and you don't know what's in it. Could you tell me a bit about how comfortable you are with that? Well, there's the thought that all the vegetables and stuff have been fried, and I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> but if I make it, made it at home and grilled it or had it raw, then I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Erin? All of the time, I just feel as though I shouldn't be eating, and once I start eating, that's it. I've done it, I'm like, and I feel really guilty about it. It's the guilt and the, the feelings after eating that are hard to manage, and that's yeah. what leads to you throwing it back up again. Mm -hmm. Which makes me feel worse, cos then I've thrown up the first part of my day, and then... Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it's a bad start to the day, because you've, you've already eaten and been sick, and that's worse than trying to delay it and then keep something down. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know how I should eat. If I can have just, like, the one plate, if I could stop there, I would feel happy. So I can take that away from the day. Next week, cooking up some childhood favourites prompts further breakthroughs for Emma. Yeah, Emma wants to finish, finish it. Finish it. Good. And have it all. And how old are they? Good. <laughs> <laughs> for more information about eating disorders, visit our website at channel4.com forward slash supersize v super skinny. It's halfway through the diet swap and it's mealtime again for our four residents. A feast awaits Keith and Joanne with a second colossal Chinese takeaway in as many days. Oh my God! <laughs> Noodles and bean sprouts, spring roll, chips and sweet and sour sauce. Tara's having one of Keith's favourites, a doner kebab, and Janet, a plate of veg. We feed our rabbit more than this at night. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, our rabbit's fat too. <laughs> For the two mothers at the table, it's all becoming less of a joke. I don't know how you live off takeaway food. Yes. Ugh. 
Would you give one of your kids that to eat for their tea tonight? No, they'd have a lot more. Yeah. A lot, lot more than that. So why don't you do it for you? Because I just don't feel that I need it. The giant Chinese takeaway, a normal meal in Janet's diet, is starting to totally overwhelm Joe. But hopefully Janet and daughter Tara are learning from it. I ache here. It's hurting so much. I feel like I'm going to, like... Oh, I'm going to be sick. Can I go to the bathroom? I need a bathroom. Seriously. I hope Joe's OK. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. It's disgusting. I can't eat it. It's not good. I think Joe tonight really struggled with my meal. It was way too much. And actually looking at it on the plate, I can actually think, God, do I really need to eat that? And why do I eat that much? It's pretty gross. Keith is fully embracing the swap. In fact, he's already a changed man. Go. Well done. You must be so full now. God knows how you feel. No seconds. It's like I'm joking. That. <laughs> <laughs> With Keith on a roll, Dr. Christian is keen to keep him motivated and give Joanne the nudge she needs. I want to really show you why it is so important that you change your eating habits, OK? Because actually it will lead to disease and it will lead to ill health, and we're going to talk to you about some of those things now. Do you know what that is? No. It's got, no a, idea. It's got a cataract. You heard of cataracts? Mm -hmm. I've heard of that. This person is probably completely blind. And they're completely blind because they're deficient in vitamin A. Vitamin A you get from fish, butter, added into dairy products, to yogurts. Not getting enough of it can affect your eyes. Does that shock you? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that poor diets could do something as dramatic as that? No. no. Right, should we do another one? What do we think? Gross. Gross? This is what we call hypertrophied gums. Grossly enlarged, overgrown gum. One of the things that will cause this is vitamin C deficiency. And it's vital that you're getting enough in your diet. So it's both very relevant to you two guys. Let's do one more. This is a bit different. This is not a photograph. This is an X-ray, obviously. And it's an X-ray of what? Spine. what? Spine. Yeah. What's the name of the condition? Osteoporosis. Oh, what is it? It's thinning of the bones. It's loss of bone mass and therefore loss of bone strength, which then leads to breakages and fractures. Causes of osteoporosis can be vitamin... D deficiency, calcium deficiency, very, very painful. Good sources of calcium include dairy foods, green leafy vegetables and nuts. And you can get vitamin D from oily fish, eggs and fortified breakfast cereals. I definitely know deep down now that I have to go home and make massive, massive changes in my diet and my portion sizes, or otherwise I'm going to end up really, really poorly. Finally, a turning point for Joanne. Just in time for another meal. Can't believe you're getting through that. With the egg and the bread. How do you feel that you've got where you are and why you eat what you eat? Most yeah. people think, oh, because she's my mum, you know, she's the one that's sort of... Influenced your eating. Yeah, but a lot of it is I've influenced you in a lot of ways. Yeah, quite Cause often. Cos I don't like to say no. Do you do it for an easy life, then? Probably, yeah. Keith and Joanne are not impressed. If it was my daughter at home, I would, I know I would certainly curb my eating habits down to sort of encourage her more. If I thought that my child was overweight or eating too much, I'd step in. I wouldn't allow my child to get like that. Dr Christian is concerned that Tara and Janet are still not taking full responsibility for their weight. He wants them to see their future if they don't change their diet. I want to show you a little video now that's been made for you by somebody who knows all about you. My name is Sonia Hernandez and my weight is 41 stones. I've been incontinent now about, about two years. I can't even count how many times I've, I, I have accidents. So that's why it's like I, I don't go anywhere. I can't walk. 
like a normal person. Just, you know, I, I struggle the, uh, short distances. I run out of breath. Walking, I really miss that. People take for granted walking. I mean, I miss it so much. I can't do anything for myself anymore. My mom, she takes care of me. She does everything for me, which is hard. She had to do this for me when I was a baby, and I've basically reverted back to that. I was in a relationship with a person that uh, worked in a restaurant, so he'd bring home like pizza, chicken wings, pastas. I never said no. I knew I was overweight, but it's like you block it out. You tell yourself you're healthy, you're fine. Yes, you're you know you're just a little bit overweight, but I had all the classic symptoms of being diabetic, which is extremely thirsty, sweats, headaches. The doctor told me that the reason why I had diabetes and high blood pressure was because of my weight. Okay, Janet and Tara, you're at a point right now that you can actually do something and not get to, to where I am. It's the hardest thing to live this way. It's easy for you to think it's not gonna happen to me. That's exactly what I thought and I got really sick. I'm very sick. I can die. I don't want that to happen to you. She upset you. Seeing that, I feel that I've caused her to be like that. Because I'm giving to you all the time. I feel like I feed you to be nice to you. I encourage you to eat, to eat crap, and I let I know. You don't encourage me. I do, because I go to the shop and buy it. I think that's a very fair point that you've just made, yeah. actually. But Tara, Still tell me what, what you think about what your mum's just said. I never really realised, you know, that she did that. Do you think that's a common thing amongst mums? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, it is. Very. Do you think you've done that to her all along? Yeah. So that's the first time you've heard that from your mum? Today's going to be the hardest day. Yeah. To ensure the message stays with Janet and Tara, Dr Christian has a plan. I've got something else I want to tell you now. I want you to go over to America and see her. Oh, God. And I want you to go and spend some time with her mm -hmm. and really see what her life is like. It'd be nice to meet Sonia to get her side. Hopefully she'll make us realise how stupid we are. I'm dreading seeing, going and seeing her, actually, cos I think she'll think I'm an idiot. She realises that she's been silly with her life. Yeah. And she wants to stop you doing it to yours. Yeah. Don't cry. It's the final night in the feeding clinic and the last calorific meal for Joe and Keith. It's pie and chips and burger and chips, followed by a portion of eaten mess. Janet's got crackers, yoghurt and tea, and Tara a pizza and an energy drink. So when we leave here, do you think you're going to keep on drinking as much coffee and energy drinks, or do you think you're going to try to sort of substitute it for a bit more food? No more energy drinks, no more caffeine for coffee. I'll um, stick to food in the future. Yay! Keith rediscovered his appetite from day one, and fully embraced the swap. Do you two feel that you've learned much about your portion sizes? 100%. Our portion <clears throat> sizes are way, way too big. Being here has just proved to me that sometimes, you know, maybe I'm not going to get as hungry as I think I am, because <laughs> I've been able to survive on, you know, a lot less than I would usually eat. Mum and daughter are ready to face a healthier future together. Jo, do you like the pie? I really enjoyed it. Good. Thank you. That's all right. Yay! Jo Yay. enjoyed food! <laughs> <laughs> <I did>. Breakthrough! <laughs> Joanne's found the going tough, 
but finally she's appreciating food again. We've got any after snack, please. Get <laughs> your hands off my pudding, mister. Now you're actually fighting over food. <laughs> yeah. It's time for our residents to check out of the feeding clinic. And Dr Christian has given all four a healthy eating plan to take home. When we get home, we're going to encourage each other now to exercise more, eat the right foods. Yeah. No more takeaways. It'll be more encouraging each other in the right ways rather yeah. than the wrong ways in the future, I think. It's been quite an emotional roller coaster. I think I've learnt lots, though. You've spurred me on amazingly. We're in the zone, aren't yeah. we? We're, we're actually raring to go. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. You need to realise why you eat the wrong foods and yeah. where the problem first started before you can actually put it all back to being right again. And you need to work yeah. it all out before you can change it forever, yeah. don't you, really? Definitely. We've all agreed, all four yeah. of us, that if we get into a bad place in any time of day, that we can just call each yeah. other for backup and reassurance. Coming up, Janet and Tara see firsthand what makes movement impossible for 41 stone Sonia. Maybe I can show you how my tummy sits. And our diet swappers reunite to see how they've got on. Shortly after leaving the feeding clinic, Janet and Tara fly to Arizona in America to meet 41 Stone Sonia Hernandez. I feel really nervous about meeting her. I don't know if it's just because I'm not really that far off of her weight, really. Nice to meet you. Because of her size and lack of mobility, Sonia's confined to her house. Do you ever feel like relaxed and comfortable? I can be okay sitting down for a while. Yeah. But then, you know, my legs start to feel tired. Here, maybe I can show you mm -hmm. um, how my tummy sits on my legs. See? Yeah. So it's so much weight mm -hmm. on my legs that... Hurts it, the legs. It, yeah, it begins to, mm -hmm. to numb, you know, makes my legs fall uh -huh. asleep. I just can't believe that she manages to sort of... Live in one I room. I don't know how she doesn't, like, crack up. <laughs> If I was so inside. confined, you'd feel so, like, trapped. Mm. You might as well go to prison. You're locked in, you can't get out, mm. you know. The girls spend the entire day at Sonia's house, experiencing her isolated life. Janet takes the opportunity to chat to her mum about both their daughters. I feel really guilty that I've let Tara get to the size that she is. Do you feel guilty? I don't feel guilty, but I feel no. bad for her because I cannot do a lot of stuff for mm -hmm. her sometimes. Sonia's mum doesn't actually blame herself for the way Sonia is. She, she, she knows it's Sonia that's done it, where I sort of tend to blame myself. At least Janet has come to terms with her part in her daughter's size and is clearly shocked by Sonia's health problems. <sighs> Seeing Sonia struggle was quite hard, really, because not a nice thing to do, is it, when you desperately need the loo and you've got to have somebody assist you to go. I don't want to fall over. If I got to the stage of being incontinent and basically, like, the simple things you take for granted, I would probably just kill myself. I don't want anybody to go through the things that mm. I went through, and that's why... You know, hopefully you can see, you know, everything that I'm going through. Definitely. And, and try not to get to the point that I mm. got to. It's weird because I still see Sonia as something that I know that I'm not going to become now, but I know that I could have definitely turned out... Bigger. Yeah. Oh. And I really it hope was... you get much better and oh, get out and about I, more. I, I can't wait to come and visit <laughs> yeah, you guys. Yeah, it's been yeah. so nice I know. Nice Hopefully I've caught it before. It's too late. It's too late, yeah. Not hopefully you have. Well, you never know. No, we know. You're not going back there. A few months later and it's time to find out if Janet and Tara have been true to their word. 
as they return to the feeding clinic for a final checkup, along with Keith and Joanne. First to be reassessed and reweighed by Dr. Christian are Janet and Tara. You both look very well. So tell me how it's been. We've coped with it all fine, haven't we? Worked hard down the gym, swimming, wow. aqua aerobics, toning chairs. Well, I mean, that is so, the number one on the list, massive change that you've yeah, managed to do, yeah, so that's fantastic. Yeah. And then what about the eating habits? It's completely different, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, sometimes it's quicker to cook a meal at home than it is to order it and drive up the Chinese <laughs> and get all the way back and dish it up. So you guys who were the takeaway queens, are you telling me now that a home-cut meal is more convenient and quicker and better? Yeah, definitely 100%. Wow. I think having you guys doing this together was yeah, a really good move. It was yeah, great. Definitely. And you can support yeah. each other. Next, it's our super skinnies, Joanne and Keith. Tell me what's new for you. I've got more appetite for food now. A lot of things changed. I've changed jobs, work less hours, more close to home. So I'll get more time for myself to, to eat. You're sort of using liquids instead of solids, really, as food, and they were caffeine-containing liquids. Have you managed to cut that down a little bit? Completely. Completely? Completely. There's no caffeine tablets, no energy drinks, no caffeine at all. That's very impressive. And Joanne, what about you, then? I eat a lot more. A lot more energy. Children have really, really noticed the difference in my eating. Now it's not, Mum, you need to eat, it's, wow, Mum, you're still <laughs> eating. Whereas before, I don't know how I lived. I don't know how my body kept me going. Can you see yourself slipping back to the caffeine pills and the, Absolutely the limited, not. restricted diets? No, no way. Why not? No. Because I prefer me now to then. Before Dr Christian reveals the results, it's time for our Fab Four to meet up again. Hello. See you again. Looking well. And you? You look really well. Thank you. We don't interrupt you guys. So, Joanne, if we start off with you, what would you like to have achieved? How much weight would you like to have gained in an ideal world? I'd like to have put on two or three pounds. You've gained seven pounds. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. Wow. So, you pleased? Ecstatic, yeah. yeah. That's fantastic, Joanne. Thank you. Well, well done. Well done. So, Keith, what about you, then? I'd like to say, I mean, to be fair, four or five pound, but any plus is better, because I'm on the right road to recovery now. I'm just going to cut straight to it. You've put on a stone. Wow! wow. You've put on a stone. A stone? <laughs> yeah, a stone. Good. Wow. Right, girls. Tara? Yes. Tell me what you would hope for. I would hope for at least a stone. Double that. Two stone. And then add ten pounds. Wow. And that's what you've gone and lost. Two stone, ten pounds. Oh, you're going to cry again. <laughs> no, you can't cry at this point. This is a happy moment. That's what it is, happiness. Well Two done. stone, ten pounds is huge. Are you pleased with that, despite the tears? Yeah. You are. Janet, finally, but yeah. you're out of your misery. What would you like to have achieved, then? Eighteen pound would be fine. I can tell you you've done a lot more than that. Three stone, one pound <gasps> you've lost. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's massive. Yeah. It's huge. I feel really, really pleased with my result and I just can't wait to go on to lose more and be more successful, really. She's spurred me on as well. Just thanks to her that I've lost as much as I have. I'm so pleased, but I'm going to continue and put on a few more pounds, hopefully. Put a stone on in a short period of time, that's incredible, and it? it's all purely down to my eating habits, so I'm going to keep going forward. Working out the psychology behind why we eat the way we do is key to gaining a healthier control over our diets. These four have done just that and their hard work has really paid off in a set of results that they can be truly proud of. Next week in our feeding clinic, supersized Stew swaps diets with super skinny Alice. Mmm, mm. that's a bit of fat there. Our super sizer sees how morbid obesity makes walking impossible. I use this to get around the park because yeah. I can't walk that far. And our women with eating disorders look back to a time when food wasn't a problem. It's lovely photo. Mm. Mm. So refreshing.